permanent establishments. The main use of the concept of a permanent establishment is to determine the right of a contracting state to tax the profits of an enterprise of the other contracting state. Article 7 says, Profits of an enterprise of a contracting state shall be taxable only in that state unless the enterprise carries on a business in the other contracting state through a permanent establishment situated therein. So let us assume that Fashion Co. is established in London. It is successful and after two years it opens a branch in Bath. From a UK perspective, Fashion Co. is taxed exactly as it was before when it had no branch or PE. Due to ongoing success, Fashion Co. opens branches in Berlin, Paris and Madrid. According to Article 7 of the treaties between the UK and France, Germany and Spain, these countries can now tax the net profits of these branches in France, Germany and Spain respectively, as if each of these PEs were separate and independent enterprises. As Article 7 concludes, the profits that are attributable to the permanent establishment, as if it were a separate and independent enterprise, may be taxed in that other state. For example, if Fashion Co. London would have sold a garment for 100 to an independent fashion store in Berlin, and that store could have sold that garment for 150 to a German consumer, then PE Berlin likewise should report sales proceeds of 150 less cost of goods sold of 100 as its German taxable income. Meanwhile, Fashion Co. London would have to pay the UK tax on the 100 it earned from the sales of PE Berlin, less its costs of goods sold. We will deal with exemption and credit systems for achieving these outcomes at a later stage. For now, we will focus on the types of PEs that exist and the threshold for realizing them. Types of PEs The first type of PE is also the general type of PE, a fixed place of business. According to Article 5.1, a PE is a fixed place of business through which the business of an enterprise is carried on. So there are three conditions. One, a place of business, i.e. a facility such as premises or machinery or equipment. Two, it must be fixed, i.e. it must be a distinct place with a certain degree of permanence. And three, through which the business is carried on. Examples of other PEs are listed in Article 5.2 and include a place of management, which is not necessarily an office, a branch, as described in the previous slide, or an office, a factory, a workshop, a mine, an oil well, a quarry, or other places of extraction of natural resources. Places of extraction of natural resources can either be onshore or offshore. What these places have in common is one, that they are places where business is carried on, and two, that they are fixed. Otherwise, they are not PEs. Now, it may be difficult to imagine a quarry that is not fixed, but e.g. a place of management that is not fixed cannot be a PE either. We will later get to the exact meaning of the word fixed. These examples of PEs have little else in common in terms of size, cost, or location. Further types of PEs. Construction PEs. The next type of PE is building sites, construction and installation projects, provided that they last longer than 12 months. This type of PE includes buildings, roads, bridges, canals, pipelines, excavating and dredging. It also covers the installation of complex machines and on-site planning and supervision. The 12-month test applies to each individual site or project, i.e., Two 11-month consecutive building projects on separate sites do not constitute a PE just because they last 22 months altogether. A site exists from the date on which the contractor begins his work, including any preparatory work. It continues to exist until the work is completed or permanently abandoned. A site should not be regarded as ceasing to exist when work is temporarily discontinued. In the case of fiscally transparent partnerships, the 12-month test is applied at the level of the partnership as concerns its own activities, i.e. 
If the partnership is engaged for more than 12 months, a construction PE exists for all partners, even if they individually spend less than 12 months on the construction. Dependent Agent PEs A dependent agent is a person acting in a contracting state on behalf of an enterprise. Such person has, and habitually exercises, an authority to conclude contracts in the name of the enterprise. That person's activities can constitute a permanent establishment in the state where the activities are performed. Under BEPS Action 7, the scope of a dependent agent is expanded to include commissioners. More about this when we deal with dependent agents in detail. A dependent agent PE does not require a fixed place of business. A dependent agent can be a company or an individual, a resident or a non-resident, and an employee or not. The agent should exercise its authority habitually, meaning that it requires some degree of permanence. It should not be one-off or transitory. Finally, the agent should be dependent, meaning that there is no PE if the enterprise uses a broker, a general commission agent, or any other independent agent acting in the ordinary course of their business. Next, e-commerce. The difference between software and hardware complicates e-commerce PEs. Generally, hardware at a given location may constitute a permanent establishment, if it is fixed. As is the case with other automated equipment like pumps or tunnel cleaners, a permanent establishment may exist even though no personnel is present at the location of the equipment. Typically, internet service providers or ISPs do not constitute PEs for the websites that they host. These ISPs do not represent the websites they are hosting and do not conclude contracts in their names. Lastly, service PEs. Some states consider that profits from services performed on their territory should be taxable by them because those profits are sourced in their state, even in the absence of a fixed place of business. The OECD Moral Convention includes alternative text for Article 5 under which such a services PE comes into existence if the services provided exceed more than 183 days during any 12-month period. Fixed places of business that do not constitute a PE. In spite of what has been discussed before, a company will not have a permanent establishment in another state if the activity of the fixed place of business or the dependent agent is of a preparatory or auxiliary character. Article 5.4 of the OECD Model Convention provides a number of examples. A. The use of facilities solely for the purpose of storage, display or delivery of goods or merchandise belonging to the enterprise. B. The maintenance of a stock of goods or merchandise belonging to the enterprise solely for the purpose of storage, display or delivery. C. The maintenance of a stock of good or merchandise belonging to the enterprise solely for the purpose of processing by another enterprise. D. The maintenance of a fixed place of business solely for the purpose of purchasing goods or merchandise or of collecting information for the enterprise. E. The maintenance of a fixed place of business solely for the purpose of carrying on for the enterprise any other activity of preparatory or auxiliary character. And finally, any combination of these exempt activities performed from a fixed place of business or through a dependent agent will not constitute a permanent establishment provided that those activities are of a preparatory or auxiliary character. BEPS Action 7 has worked on narrowing the scope of the exemptions from PEs by 1 explaining that the preparatory or auxiliary test applies to all exemptions and not just the last two, and two, by preventing the artificial splitting of activities across multiple entities, where each of those activities in themselves may be preparatory or auxiliary, but in combination, they exceed that threshold. 